Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This kind of follows up in a hearing we had two weeks ago on um, the environment and the economy as my subcommittee. But we have to accept the fact that the decisions we make or the decision that regular ma makes, that there is a job aspect that people ought to debate and discuss. Um, and I come to this with great passion because, and many of you have seen this before, Mr. Kerry, you have, Mr. CCO, you've seen. This is why we killed Waxman Markey, because we made the argument that in 92 on, on clean, the Clean Air Act, which was a legitimate debate on cleaning the air, these miners lost their jobs. This is just one group of miners at, at a mine in my congressional district, which is closed now, 1,000 miners lost their jobs. And by using this, and, and the reality is, there's a lot of fossil fuel Democrats no longer in Congress. And you know why? Because they didn't protect their jobs. Because the greenhouse gas movement, the Waxman Markey, threatened to destroy any remaining jobs. Mr. Kerry, I, we've testified before, how many coal miner jobs were lost in the advent of the Clean Air Act? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Congressman Chimkus, the, the, the idea in Ohio, and I think when, when I testified before, we looked at we, the amount of tonnage of coal, we lessened it by half, take away half that miners, those were roughly 3,000 miners, multiplier effect of close to 10,000, um, or 10 for every one coal mining job. So 30, you, you, your stats were 35,000 jobs were yeah. lost, and that was in the Clean Air Act, which a lot of us would say, knock socks, particular matter, some bad stuff that we really needed to get out of, you know, out of the air. There, there is now a debate about greenhouse gases. And is it a pollutant? Is it not? And that's why we need to move on this legislation to let us to take into to the aspect of what's the cost, what's the impact on the economy? Why are we so fired up about this? Well, here's just one rule from the EPA on Rick Rust, and they, they're quoted, the RIA for this proposed rule does not include either qualitative or quantitative estimation of the potential effects of the proposed rule on economic productivity, economic growth, employment, job creation, or international economic competitiveness. Now, Mr. Kerry, don't you think we ought to consider that when we're promulgating a rule or a regulation? Mr. Chairman, Congressman, yes. Mr. Cecil? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mr. McConnell? Mr. Montgomery? Yes. Mr. Riker? Do you, do you think the EPA is wrong in not considering the economic impact of a proposed rule? Uh, EPA is required to consider the economic impact of a proposed rule. They, um, here, this is from the EPA. Well, and I just read the quote. They've got to be let me just go to another, feasible. Let, let me just go to another one. Economic analysis on another proposed EPA rule. Let me read in uh, sub, uh, paragraph 9.2.3.2. Uh, three, impacts on employment. The chapters on benefits, Chapter 7 and cost, Chapter 8, point out that the regulatory-induced employment impacts are not, in general, relevant for a cost-benefit analysis. So, Mr. Shimkus, I, I would just urge you to take a look at the Clean Air Act sections, the three sections that relate to... Well, I, I've already, and I'm going to reclaim my time. I'm going to, I'm going to defer, I'm going to gonna reclaim my time, sir. Sir, I'm going to reclaim my, reason. I'm going to reclaim my time. Uh, my point is the Clean Air Act, we're not disputing NOx, SOx, particulate matter. We do dispute carbon dioxide. Now, I have a 1,600 megawatt. Does everyone agree that if you raise the price of a commodity product, that the cost of goods sold goes up? Yes. I see yes, CCO? Absolutely. Yeah. Mr. McConnell, Mr. Joyce, Mr. Montgomery, Ms. Riker? Ask you know, a question I, again? <laughs> I, I, asked, uh, I asked Administrator Jackson if she really believed in the, the basic economic 101 supply and demand. If the, if the supply is constrained or the cost of the good goes up, does that mean that the price of the cost of the good goes up? Well, if you have to uh, use the same amount of that good in the product, if that, you can improve That the was a better answer than the Administrator gave, and I appreciate that. You can improve that. the efficiency of the manufacturing <laughs> process. And which they do. That's, that's the whole debate that Mr. Cecil will say. It's not worth the, the manufacturer's time, effort, and energy to run inefficient plants. Now, and let me end. I'm going to run out of time. Mr. Cecil, you said 
you don't know of a single manufacturer that would not be harmed by greenhouse gas right, and would lose jobs. Is that your what quote? What I said spe specifically is that I, I talked to lots, many, many manufacturers that have facilities all over the country. I do not know, have not heard of one that support the EPA greenhouse gas regulations. Yes, Thank sir. you. I'll go back.